Hello friends, I am Hardik Patel. Welcome back to Arotech channel. In previous video, we talked about how we can build chat consumer where one person can send the message to other person and receive as well. Right? So this is the chat consumer which we built in the last video. In this video, we are going to convert this chat consumer from synchronous consumer to asynchronous consumer. So let's get started. So this is chat consumer and we use sync consumer as a base class. Now we need to change that sync consumer to a sync consumer. So I'm importing that a sync consumer and I'm changing it. Okay. So now we are uh, inheriting this async consumer. So we need to convert all the methods which are handling all the events to asynchronous. And how can we write asynchronous function in Python? That is very basic and very simple that you need to write a sync keyword before the EF keyword. So now this function is called asynchronous function in Python, right? So let's write a sync keyword to each and every line of definition of function like this. Okay. Now I am not changing the store me uh, message function to async function for now because it has all the uh, statements are synchronous. So we have another method to convert this store message function synchronous to asynchronous that we are going to see later. Okay. So let's go to the first function where we are just getting the connection request and we are accepting it. Right. So we are going to see uh, statement by statement where we need to convert uh, synchronous to asynchronous where we need to remove this asynchronous to sync function. Right. So let's go into it. Uh, this me is just getting the user from scope dictionary. So that is fine. The stack second statement is also fine. But the third statement where we are using Django ORM function where we are trying to get user uh, using this other username, right? Where we are using this get function and this is synchronous function. So to convert that synchronous function to asynchronous function, uh, we have another function similar to this async to sync like sync to async right and and you know already how we can use this both the function now because uh, syntax is a similar to this async to sync function so you just copy it and paste it like this and just wrap it as argument this whole function and now it is fine right now one more thing that whenever you are calling asynchronous function either you will get uh, routine coroutine if you are not waiting for the result and if you want to wait for the result uh, function will execute and return the object whatever result you are expecting but to do that you need to use the await keyword so whenever you use await keyword that means this function will be executed and whatever result is there will be returned to this variable or object okay but if you don't write this await it will return only coroutine Okay, so this other user is having now concrete user and same way we are changing this function to because this is another Django ORM function. All right. So now we have thread object as well. And uh, this is normal statement where we are just concreting the string. And yes, this is async to sync we used last time because this group add function is by default asynchronous and to change that to synchronous we use that. But now our whole function is asynchronous. So we don't need to convert this synchronous to synchronous, right? So we are just removing it like this. But yes, we have to await for the result. Why? Because if you don't wait for the result, uh, it will just go into the background and execution will go further like it will execute self dot send function as well and the further print statement as well but what will happen then there is an event loop is the concept of running all the asynchronous function into one event loop if event loop is closed and there are few function already in uh, in a background running those will be lost right so what happens if you don't write await it will go further and further and event loop will be closed and if these events even any one of this event is not executed successfully that means let's suppose this uh, send function is not executed successfully 
and that means connection was not accepted right and in that case the disconnect event automatically uh, triggered right so let's let's check it out let me show you that if i don't use await keyword for this both actually even group add and send function as well because send function is also a synchronous function as you can see right so let's do on uh, not write await for now and i'm just saving it so as you can see uh, server is refreshed now and i am just reloading this page so it will try to connect okay so as you can see it is saying you are connected and now as you can see here disconnected event was fired and you can also see that you cannot use async to sync that is anyways it is from disconnect function where we have used async to sync here it is so it is raising the error because we are executing synchronous function inside asynchronous event loop okay so anyways that is different error but as you can see disconnected was called automatically because it was not accepted that connection okay so let's use that await keyword now and see what happens so if you write await it will wait for the successful execution of the function and then only it will go further okay so that means if this print statement has uh, printed then you can uh, surely say that connection was accepted successfully all right so let's save it and refresh the page again here it is now as you can see you are now connected let's wait for one or two seconds and see if disconnected event is fired or not so as you can see now there is no discuss disconnect event is fired so you are sure that it is accepted successfully all right now let's go to other functions and change them to also so there is a web socket receive where first statement is print and the second statement is message where you don't need to do anything because it's a normal json uh, function but now as you can see there is a store message function which is completely synchronous now if you have written a function which does only uh, django stuff then how can you convert this whole function to asynchronous so there is another uh, thing which is provided by channels which is decorator so let's import that as well so channels dot db import django sync to async all right so this is decorator which you can use to convert this synchronous function to asynchronous function like this okay so this sorry it's not django it's a database all right let me change it here as well okay so now this function is completely asynchronous so you can call this similar to other asynchronous function like this okay so you just need to write await keyword here as simple as that right so now it looks like a normal asynchronous function and you can pass the argument same way you do for the synchronous function okay and the same way uh, we need to remove this async to sync and just use the await keyword here remove this bracket as well this websocket receive function is working fine now so we need to change this websocket message as well where you just need to write await here so this is the sending event of message sending all right and same way for websocket disconnect connection where we need to use the await keyword and just remove it like this okay so now whole uh, consumer is now asynchronous let's check it out whole functionality is working fine or not so i am just uh using both the browser and see, refreshing both the page so you we should be able to connect okay so what is the issue i think we changed that right to django it is database all right so it was not refreshed the server is not refreshed so we need to refresh again all right server is running now and let's rephrase both the page 
and we should be able to connect both the clients so as you can see both the clients are connected successfully and now let's send the messages so I'm sending a message from Hardik yeah we are getting a response how are you yeah as you can see the functionality is working fine the same way it was working earlier with the synchronous consumer right so this is uh, uh, to understand more differences between synchronous and asynchronous functionality uh, you can definitely go to the documentation of python or synchronous uh, maybe i can cover uh, asynchronous functionality of python uh, in future videos maybe not in this series but definitely i can cover it uh, in future but for now you have to go to uh, the documentation of asynchronous python so that's pretty much from this video uh, in the next video i'm going to uh, use token authentication and how can we use those token to authenticate websocket request as well so that's what we are going to do in the next video so see you soon in the next video